Holy smokes, that is insane. I was expecting a big improvement, but wow. I've been using the Tab S9 and S9 Ultra for over a week. And today, we're going to be taking a look at all the new features, do a deep dive comparison between the S8 and S9 series to test everything from performance to battery life to screen and speaker quality and much more. This video is going to focus on the Tab S9 Ultra and whether or not it's worth the upgrade from the Tab S8 Ultra. But I have a separate dedicated video on the S9 versus S8 that I'll have linked at the end of this video if you want to see that. Regardless, I'll include the Tab S9 in this video for important things like screen brightness, performance, and battery life. All right, let's get started. In the box, you get the tablet, the S Pen, a six foot long USB-C cable, a SIM ejector tool so you can install a micro SD card if you have one, and a quick start guide. Something you don't get is a charger in the box, but the cable does support the full 45 watt charging that the tablet's capable of. And if you're looking for a good 45 watt charger, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description and pinned comment to a couple good options. I'll also leave a link to a limited time deal where you can get up to $650 off the Tab S9 Ultra with a trade-in and a free book cover keyboard slim in case you want to pick one up on a great deal. Let's go ahead and take the tablet out of the sleeve now. So here's that graphite color. And it might be hard to tell on camera, but the Tab S9 Ultra is a slightly lighter gray compared to the Tab S8 Ultra. The Tab S9 Ultra now has two microphones on top, but the button and accessory attachment locations are identical. Looking at the sides, you can see that the speakers get one more hole and the antenna bands are in slightly different locations. Looking back at the top of the tablet, you can see the micro SD card slot right here. To put a micro SD card in there, just take the SIM ejector tool that came with the tablet, push the SIM ejector tool into the ejection hole, then use your fingers to pull out the tray, put a micro SD card in the tray, and then reinsert it. Now let's compare the Tab S8 Ultra to the Tab S9 Ultra. Looking at the back of both devices, the only way you can tell the difference is through the cameras. So the Tab S9 Ultra has individual camera cutouts now, and you also get a bump on the ultra wide camera from 6 megapixels to 8 megapixels. The standard rear camera stays at 13 megapixels, just like it was on the Tab S8 Ultra. In terms of image quality, while the ultra wide camera on the S9 Ultra does add 2 megapixels, it's a significantly narrower image, and the extra megapixels don't seem to do much for image quality. Personally, I'd rather have the wider image of the S8 Ultra. The front cameras remain the same as last year, and looking at the pictures side by side, you can see that the S9 Ultra captures a slightly brighter image than the S8 Ultra, which may come in handy for low light situations. Here's a 4K video test with the front camera on the Tab S9 Ultra, and this is the standard angle camera, so let's go ahead and switch to the wide angle camera. So here's a shot with the wide angle camera, and as you can see, you get a whole lot more in the frame with the wide angle camera. Here's an auto framing test, and as you can see, it immediately grabs onto my face and it tracks it wherever I go. And this does track very well. As you'll see in a minute, this tracks significantly better than the Tab S8 Ultra. So if auto framing is something you use often, the Tab S9 Ultra will offer an upgrade for this. But it is worth noting that auto framing on both the Tab S9 Ultra as well as the Tab S8 Ultra is limited to full HD resolution. Here's a 4K video test with the front facing standard angle camera on the Tab S8 Ultra. And now we're going to go ahead and switch to the wide angle lens to see what that looks like. So here we are with the wide angle. As you can tell, you can fit a whole lot more in the shot when you're using a wide angle. So here's an auto framing test with the Tab S8 Ultra. As you can tell, it's not nearly as good as it is on the Tab S9 Ultra. It's taken a while to find my face and continue to track it. If I move back a little bit, it'll finally catch me. There it is. All right. So as you can tell, auto framing isn't quite as good on the S8 Ultra as it is on the S9 Ultra. Besides the difference in cameras, the charging dock for the S Pen does look a bit different as well, and the magnets that hold the pen on the Tab S9 Ultra are significantly stronger than the magnets that were on the Tab S8 Ultra. And I have both S Pens here to demonstrate that. But first, the easiest way to tell the difference between the old and new S Pen is that the old S Pen has white lettering, and the new S Pen has a darker gray lettering. So putting the S Pen on the Tab S8 Ultra, it snaps into place and wiggles just a little bit, but putting it on the Tab S9 Ultra, it snaps solidly into place and there is no wiggling at all. I can even start to pick the tablet up with how strong that magnet is. On the Tab S8 Ultra, there's no way you'd be able to pick the tablet up. Besides the stronger magnets on the Tab S9 Ultra, the S Pen can now be flipped around the other way and it'll still be able to charge. On the Tab S8 Ultra, that was not the case. If you try to put it on backwards, it would barely even get aligned. And in case you're wondering, the new S Pen easily snaps onto the Tab S8 Ultra in either direction, but it only charges with the pen tip facing the cameras. If the pen tip faces away from the cameras, it won't charge at all. If you try to put the old S Pen on the Tab S9 Ultra, that'll work as well, 
but the magnets on the old S Pen aren't as strong as the new S Pen's magnets, so this does come off pretty easy. And you can also flip the old S Pen around the other way, and it'll continue to charge. Outside of adding IP68 water resistance and making the S Pen dock reversible, the S Pen remains functionally the same as the previous generation. And since I've covered the S Pen extensively in other videos, I'm not going to do a deep dive here. If you want to see my S Pen related videos, you can check those out with the links in the description and pinned comment. The front of the devices are visually identical. Even the camera notch is the same on both. In fact, you probably can't even tell which is which just by looking at them here. If you guessed that the top one was the Tab S9 Ultra, you'd be wrong. It's the bottom one. So in terms of the quality of the displays, both have excellent color reproduction, and I don't think you'll notice much of a difference going from the Tab S8 Ultra to the Tab S9 Ultra. That said, there will be a difference in screen brightness under direct sunlight, and I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. A big difference you can't see with the Tab S9 Ultra is that it is now IP68 water resistant. So if you accidentally spill some coffee or juice on it, you can just rinse it off in the sink. And this applies to the new S Pen too. But keep in mind that the keyboard accessories are not water resistant, so I don't recommend trying to rinse these off. Now let's take a look at the brightness difference between these two tablets in direct sunlight. The difference between the S9 Ultra on the left and the S8 Ultra on the right is pretty minimal. It's there, and it's a bit more noticeable in person, but it's not a dramatic upgrade. Both are readable enough in most outdoor environments. Moving out of the direct sunlight, we can see that the S9 Ultra is a bit better, but again, it's not a reason to upgrade. And here's the S9 Ultra next to the S9. As you can see, there's barely a difference between the two screens. Even when you move to a somewhat shaded area, you'd be hard pressed to see any meaningful difference. One important thing I notice is that if you pay attention to the S9 Ultra on the left, as the tablets get hot from being in the sun, they eventually turn off the brightness booster. So here you can see the S9 Ultra got too hot and turned the brightness down, but the S9 hadn't been in the sun long enough to turn its brightness down yet. So just keep in mind that the brightness booster won't be as effective on hot summer days compared to cooler days. The entire Tab S9 series gets the new Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, so let's see how much of a difference that makes. We have all the tablets charged to 100%, so let's go ahead and start the benchmark. So here are the results. The Tab S9 Ultra was just slightly ahead of the Tab S9, and that was similar for the Tab S8 Ultra versus the Tab S8. And from the Tab S8 series to the Tab S9 series, we do see quite a big jump in performance. Now let's see how that translates to real world use. First, let's see how fast these tablets can open DeX, which is Samsung's desktop experience that gives you a desktop and multiple floating window support, just like a regular laptop. Let's see if I can hit all of these at the same time. All right, first try. So it looks like the Tab S9 Ultra and Tab S9 opened at almost the exact same time, with the Tab S8 Ultra and Tab S8 lagging slightly behind. But regardless, all of these opened it super quick. Now I want to try a processor-intensive video export using LumaFusion. This is a 15 plus minute 4K video, and I've applied a Gaussian blur to the entire video. So let's see how these tablets perform this time. Holy smokes, the Tab S9 was almost twice as fast as the Tab S8 in exporting that video. That is insane. I was expecting a big improvement, but not double the performance. If you're planning on doing any video editing with your tablet, the increase in performance alone is worth the upgrade. I also tried a few games on the tablets, and I didn't notice much of a difference with the games that I tried. And that's mainly because the Tab S8 and S8 Ultra already ran games perfectly fine for me. But let me know in the comments below if there are some particularly difficult games to run, and maybe I'll try those out for a future video. Now let's see how much of a difference the 20% larger speakers make, and for this test, I'm even going to bring in the iPad Pro. So after listening to all five tablets, it's clear that the S9 sounds notably fuller than the S8 with a marginal volume boost as well, 
but the S8 Ultra sounds more clear than the S9 while being at about the same volume level. Then the S9 Ultra sounds both fuller and louder than the previous three tablets. And Apple's iPad Pro comes in with a warmer sound at a slightly lower volume than the Tab S9 Ultra. Let me know in the comments below which speakers you liked the best. And just so you can more easily hear the difference between the best and worst speakers, here's a direct comparison between the S8 speakers and the S9 Ultra speakers. In terms of battery life, in the first day I got a little over six hours of usage. And that's from a mix of movies, YouTube, some video exports, running benchmarks, and playing a couple games. The biggest battery drain came from YouTube, which can be seen in this steep slope right here. And I think that's because the majority of the screen was pretty white, and that's gonna cause a lot more battery drain on an OLED display versus a dark screen. The movies weren't as bright, so there wasn't as dramatic of a drop. And for this entire test, I used the max brightness and max volume to really test the battery. So six hours should really be the minimum amount of battery life you'll get with this. The Tab S8 Ultra had almost the exact same screen on time as the Tab S9 Ultra, and that makes sense because both of these tablets have the same battery capacity. But keep in mind that this test was also done with max brightness and max volume for the duration of the tests. I decided to run the battery life test again, but this time only going up to 50% brightness and 50% volume for all tests. I also dropped the processor heavy tasks like video exporting and benchmarking. This brought the battery life on the S9 Ultra up to nearly nine hours of screen on time. This includes about two hours of YouTube, three hours of watching movies, 30 minutes of gaming, 30 minutes of note taking, and more. And that's also with two days of standby time. So you can expect to get a bit more battery life in a single day if you start at 100%. The Tab S8 Ultra had nearly the exact same screen on time with similar usage, but only nine hours of standby time. So it looks like you can expect to get at least marginally better battery life on the S9 Ultra when you account for that extra 40 hours of standby time. Running the Tab S8 and S9 through the same test with max brightness and volume, we get very similar results to the Ultra Series tablets with around six hours of screen on time. Dropping the brightness and volume down to 50% puts both the S8 and S9 right in line with the S9 Ultra at nearly nine hours of battery life. I had a chance to test out the charge speed between both of these tablets from zero to 100% using Samsung's official 45 watt charger. The S8 Ultra charged 1% for every minute of charging up until about 80% which means after 80 minutes, I had an 80% charge. The S8 Ultra slowed its charging a bit at that point and it finished charging to 100% in an hour and 45 minutes. The S9 Ultra was a little bit slower to charge and took an extra 20 minutes to hit 100%, so about two hours and five minutes of total charge time. This is a bit surprising because both of these tablets have the same 11,200 milliamp hour battery and both were turned off while they were charging. All right, now let's test out a bunch of accessories and see which ones are forwards or backwards compatible. We'll start with the book cover keyboard slim. So here's the keyboard cover slim and the keyboard portion looks identical to the keyboard portion that was on the original book cover keyboard that I got with my Tab S8 Ultra. And the main differences between the two is that the regular keyboard has the trackpad and it also has a backlit keyboard. The slim version drops the trackpad and also drops backlit keys. The stand mechanism is also slightly different on this so let me show you that. The cover just attaches to the back of the tablet magnetically and when you want to use the keyboard you just fold it out and have the bottom pins to connect to these pins here. The full size book cover keyboard comes in two pieces. You have the back plate which just magnetically connects to the tablet. Then you have this section here which magnetically connects to the bottom of the tablet. And when you want the tablet to stand up you just pull this back piece out and this is infinitely adjustable to wherever you need. Then you just tip it up and you're all set up. A key difference here is how much space this takes up on the table. So the slim version only takes up about eight and a half inches of table space. While the full size keyboard takes up a minimum of 11 inches. And here's a look at the two side by side if the backs of the tablets are lined up. So as you can see, most of that extra space is just because you have the trackpad. And the other important difference to keep in mind is that the angle of the tablet on the slim keyboard is limited to just one specific angle. Fortunately, Samsung picked a very comfortable angle to view this at, but if you like adjustability for how you view your tablet, you're gonna wanna get this keyboard cover instead. And when you close them, they take up almost the exact same footprint. So now for the big question, can you use the Tab S9 Ultra with the Tab S8 Ultra accessories? Let's find out. Let's start by putting the back cover on. And we run into our first issue here. While it does mostly close, 
You can see that the cameras don't line up at all. That said, the case does stay on securely and the flap still works as intended. Now let's try mounting it to the base. Yep, that seems to work perfectly fine. It does say the connected keyboard isn't designed to be used with this tablet, but let's test it out and see if it works. So it seems like the keyboard's working perfectly fine. Let's see if any of the keyboard shortcuts work. Let's go ahead and try and open Dex. No, well, that seems to work perfectly fine. And if I turn all the lights off, looks like the backlit keyboard works too. So as long as you don't mind the camera cutout not being aligned, you can absolutely use your Tab S8 Ultra keyboards on the Tab S9 Ultra. And one more thing I want to point out about the slim keyboard cover is that this cover here for your S Pen can actually be pushed out if you want faster access to the S Pen. This will make it so you don't have to lift the flap to get to your S Pen, but your S Pen will be more likely to get lost while traveling. Now let's see if wraparound cases work. This is Samsung's official rugged case for the S8 Ultra, and let's see how well it wraps around the S9 Ultra. Since the S9 Ultra has the same physical dimensions as the S8 Ultra, I have a feeling at least three of the corners are going to fit well, but the area by the cameras might bump out a bit. And unfortunately, it does look like that's the case. All three other corners fit perfectly with no issues at all, but you can see that the cameras are pushing the case out, so it doesn't actually grab onto the edge here. And it looks like the camera flash is also obscured as well. That said, if you really wanted to, I'm sure you could take an X-Acto knife and cut around the camera holes on the case and you should still be able to use your existing cases. And let me know in the comments below if you'd use a knife to cut this out or if you just buy a new case. And obviously any tempered glass screen protectors are gonna fit just fine because the screen sizes are exactly the same. Now time for some rapid fire Q&A from questions you guys asked on my community page about the Tab S9 Ultra. A few of you guys asked if there was a pink tint to the screen. And I'm assuming you're referring to the pink tint that was on the Tab S8 Ultra when viewing it from an off angle. And I'm happy to report that that pink tint is gone. However, it is important to note that whether you're looking at the Tab S8 Ultra or Tab S9 Ultra, if you're looking directly at the screen with the screen facing you, then there is no pink tint at all. It's only when you tilt the screen on the Tab S8 Ultra that you start to see that pink tint. The next question was, is there an always on display? Technically, yes, but not the type of always on display you're probably thinking of. When you plug either of these tablets into charge, you'll get this icon in the bottom left corner. And if you tap this, you'll get something called a daily board. And if you set this up, you'll get a screensaver that appears while the tablet's charging. And if you swipe over, you can do things like add notes, control smart things devices, see the weather and pictures from your gallery, or go back to the clock. But as soon as you unplug this, that always on display disappears. Someone else asked if you can use an external keyboard and a mouse with Samsung DeX. And the answer is definitely yes. You can even use the external keyboard and mouse outside of DeX as well. Someone else asked about Bluetooth range, so I used my WH-1000XM4s and walked as far away as I could from both tablets and neither lost connection. This is true when walking around in my basement, two floors down, as well as walking as far as I could on my property. So I really think the Bluetooth range will be limited by the device you're connecting to, not the tablets. Another question was if you could connect a game console to the tablet to play the game on the tablet. And you'll see here that if I plug in my Nintendo Switch, all it does is start charging the switch, but it doesn't actually push the display to the tablet. And this will be true regardless of which console you use. The only way to use the second screen feature, which is found in your quick toggles here, is to connect it to your computer wirelessly. And all that's going to do is give you an extra screen for your computer. But the latency would likely be too high for competitive gaming, so I wouldn't recommend doing that so you could play PC games in a different room on the tablet. It could probably work for some games, but if you need fast reflexes, it probably wouldn't be a good idea. That said, if you subscribe to Xbox Game Pass and download the app to your tablet, as well as connect an Xbox controller, you'll be able to play a bunch of official Xbox games right from the tablet without needing to buy a console. And you can also use a controller to play AAA mobile titles as well. Now it's time for the big question. Is the Tab S9 Ultra worth the upgrade? Well, if you're going to be using this for video editing or high performance related tasks, it is absolutely worth the upgrade. In the video editing test alone, we saw nearly double the performance with the Tab S9 Ultra over the Tab S8 Ultra. And the affiliate link in the description and pinned comments takes you to a deal where you can get up to $650 off the Tab S9 Ultra, plus get a free book cover keyboard slim, which makes the Tab S9 Ultra even easier to recommend. But if you're not gonna take advantage of the speed boost, you'll end up with notably better speakers, IP68 dust and water resistance, marginally better screen visibility, and marginally better battery life. Whether or not those things are worth the upgrade is up to you. And if you're still on the fence, you can take a look at this video here to see 50 incredible features that are available on both the S8 and S9 series. 
Or if you want to see how the base model S9 compares to the S8, you can check out this video instead. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss my deep dive coverage of the Tab S9 and S9 Ultra. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.